Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome to the show. My name is GB. Welcome to the 90 Plus podcast. Hope all of had you guys had a great, great weekend. Uh, football was kicking this weekend, man. A lot of games, a lot of action going on. Uh, don't know if you all saw what was going on in the EPL. They've got some major situations in the English Premier League. Um, today, Manchester City uh, was served papers, and they were charged on 100 counts of fair play. Seems that they've uh, kind of cooked the books, according to the accusations, and then they are accusations. Uh, so we'll see what happens with the court system and what happens with the appeals process afterwards. So, but again, welcome to the show. Got my special guest, Mr. Mike Hyder, coming on this evening, talking about the sweeper center defender position. I'm going to add Mike into the show. I think he's available for us. Hey, Mr. Mike Hyder, how are you, sir? Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? All is well, man. All is well. Appreciate you coming on and being a part of the show this evening, man. How's Dude, everything that, with you? That Glamour Shots photo you got on the uh, beginning podcast versus what you got going on right now. <laughs> I, I see that you're in your you're in your uh, your best outfit right now for me. But why didn't you send me that picture? That's the one I want. Hey man, just uh, relaxing. You know what I mean? Psychedelic. Oh yes, oh yes. So how are things with you, man? How's the family? Everybody's well. Family's good. Um, uh, you know, Lexus is up in Tallahassee, and um, if she uh, gets into Florida State, um, in the fall. Um, you know, okay. She, Congratulations on that. Yeah, she's giving, She's living with a bunch of um, her friends that she played lacrosse with, so she might actually try out for the club team. And then um, Aubrey's uh, uh, playing for the uh, new high school team over here in Tampa, um, uh, J.W. Mitchell. So uh, okay. right, she's, uh, she's okay. out doing her thing, man. Wow. Well, congrats on the, on the move across. Now it's a new year for you guys. Yep. And acclimated and things. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so we're just going to jump in here. So – We've okay. known each other oh, 40 odd years. Yeah, give or take. 30 to 40 years, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So, of course, your main position that you've always played back in our day, it was called sweeper. Yep. Nowadays, it's a central defender alone by himself, not necessarily having a, a left footed central defender or a right footed central defender. You were the right footed and left footed defender back then. Right. So, yeah, man, so let's just get into some questions here now. Bring it. Let's see. So how uh, how old were you when you started playing? I was, a wee, I was a wee lad. I was like maybe five, six years old, so I'm 52, so that was a long time ago. I don't, I don't even know. Was that math? 47 years? <laughs> right, right. Actually, yeah. you know, I, probably, I think 77 years, man. I think you got 10 years on me, bro. <laughs> but, yeah, five <laughs> five or six years old something like that that's how i can remember okay I'll, I'll go with that we'll go with that all right so so what what event piqued your interest when it came came to uh to the football to get you to start playing there the uh ymca the winter park ymca and okay i think um you know my dad just took me down there and enrolled me in something uh, you know just to you know so that i wasn't uh you know doing the wrong things with my time. Um, we had moved to Winter Park um, from uh, south end of Orlando, actually. Um, okay. High Memorial uh, Middle School back when, um, I don't know if that school is still there, but back when we used to play, you know, with Dr. Miller. So we lived downtown. And we moved to Winter Park and um, took me down to YMCA and signed me up for 15 bucks and put me in a pair of Converse cleats. I looked <laughs> And, um, you know, just started running around like a like a pack of chickens chasing a chicken chasing a ball. Right, know? right. Now, what yeah. were your cleats? The white cleats? Did you have the white ones or white with blue Converse star? And yes, blue. yes. Okay. I I had the same pair, man. I had the same pair. Yeah. So, but at least it made you feel that you played because you got some grass stains on it after you were done, right? It's, um, you know, I looked at everybody else, and I mean, Winter Park's Winter Park, so I'm like. Kids running around in copas and so on and so forth. I was like, I gotta get me some. I gotta get me some new shoes, man. I gotta get some good. <laughs> with these dudes. So, but yeah, that was. I was. So, what position did you play when you uh, when you first started with that with that team? Um, 
I, I, I remember playing in the back. Um, you know, I don't remember necessarily if it was right or left back, but I definitely played in the back. Um, also played a little backup goalkeeper. Um, but I, I started, you know, what was my career definitely playing in the back. Okay. All right. And you said backup goalkeeper. Yeah, I remember that. You, you, you did some keep. We always rotated keepers, though. A little bit, a little bit. We played a little, played a little uh, rock, paper, scissors to see who's going in goal. We didn't have our keeper, right? Exactly, exactly. Oh, so. yes. So when did you, when did you want to know that, when did you know that you wanted to become a central defender and hence sweeper? When did you know that, that that's the position for me besides midfield or playing forward? What, what, right. what, what peaked it? I, th I think it just had a knack um, for clears. Um, I like, you know, roughing people up a little bit. So, um, uh, you know, maybe when I was probably 11 or 12. Um, and then we played on, like, I guess what you would call, like, a travel team, you know. Okay. Tried to play in different areas. And, um, you know, competition got a little bit better. And I just enjoyed playing in the back. Um, you know, we practiced um, with a group. Uh, we had a coach. We had two coaches that coached two groups. I think we, we were, like, under 12s. And then we practiced against the under 14s. So we oh. always, you know, we practiced against a group that was um, older than us. And I just really never, um, I didn't like the forwards. Um, I didn't like that prima donna, you know, attitude. So um, <laughs> it fit, playing in the back fit. Um, but I think it just, it just grew on me. And then, you know, uh, kind of progress. People rely on you. They know that you're going to be in the back. So it just, like, hey, that's the word I'm playing. I'm not playing anywhere else. I just want to back. Okay. So, like, the, the physicality piece and the, knowing that you can take the ball from someone and, and help help the team attack and, and start the process. Seems yeah. like that was your, your avenue. All right. That and having been, um, even though, you know, I was young, um, seeing the field from a goalkeeper perspective, you know, where the we, we see the entire field. Um, so it was uh, easy to – kind of be a general and right. marked up and kind of understand what was happening spatially before it happened. So it was just kind of a, you know, kind of a knack, if you will. Got you. So what did you do to get better each year as a footballer? Um, what did you work on? You know, when I was young, um, I mean, we, we played soccer year round. Um, I remember going, uh, uh, a friend of mine, his mom taught at Rollins. And um, when, mm -hmm. when my parents, weren't home we'd go up to Rollins and um, we'd find a soccer ball or a volleyball um, okay. on, on school nights we'd do our homework and then we'd play one-on-one -on -one. Um, mm. and then if we weren't in soccer season you know you know, we, you go to the beach you take a soccer ball you know you, you go to a party you take a soccer ball or a hacky sack or, or something along those lines um, to always get your touches in and you know because we only had you had you had you know, middle school or, or JV ball, um, and then you had some club, but there were definitely some downtimes, typically <clears throat> summer. So um, just wherever we went, you know, we had a ball. And, we, nice. we all, you know, two on two, three on two, three on three, whatever the case was. So um, I think as I got older in high school, you know, where I met you um, in downtown uh, Orlando Soccer Club, and then there was structure to it. You know, so it was – high school ball, then club ball, then maybe you play what would be maybe considered travel ball. You would play right. and you get you got that core group of guys, you do your tournaments. So now, you know, I think kids get burned out a little bit, but it's year round. Um, and it's competitive. You know, what we did year round was fun. And then to get to our club ball or our school ball, you know, that right. was competitive, but we did get a break. You know, nowadays I don't know that these kids get much of a break, you know. True. Very true. So how vocal were you as a sweeper and how important is it to be vocal? Because you had mentioned that earlier, so I wanted to ask that question, bring that back up. Obviously, it's, it's, um, it's like having an extra person, you know, on the field if I'm talking to you, because you're, you know, your back's to me um, mm -hmm. as a forward um, where you play. Um, I essentially direct you right or left. So being vocal, um, and if everybody's, um, right. It's like having extra people on the field. You don't have to necessarily see what's going on, but if I you know, GB left five, you know, GB right, GB back door, 
you know, you know immediately what I'm talking about. So I think that that knack to be able to see, you know, essentially, right. I don't need to see my goalkeeper. So I'm seeing 20 on the field. I see their keeper and back to what's in front of me. I mean, it's essential, you know, communication. And then you have to have a general, um, you have to have somebody, everybody can't be telling everybody what to do in critical situations. Mm -hmm. You know, you Very key. one mm -hmm. person, um, you know, I'm going to listen to him because they see the most. A lot of times that's the keeper, but, you know, um, if you've got a good, strong sweeper, a good, strong central defender, um, you know, they can, uh, they can do that for you. Nice. And you're, and you're right, though. You can't, you can't have 10 captains on the field. You know no, what I mean? And then, and then now you're going to ruffle some feathers. That's when the feelings get hurt and folks want to start leaving and going to play other way, you know, on other teams and things like that. So I think it's more, you know, more of a respect thing because, you yeah. know, we respected, we respected you, like sure. you said, because you were the vocal master, but we also knew listening to you helped us better our game and know where to be on the pitch. Well, we, you play for so long, you get, you know, and I know your voice, right? I know Tom's voice. I know right. voice like, I trust what they're going to tell me, um, you know, but uh, um, that's a, you know, playing with people for a long, long time. Um, but you're right. right. Some, some people don't like, you know, new guys to the team, whether it's high school, college, whatever, they may not want to take your direction. You, know? so, um, you got to, you know, work within that dynamic too. Got you. Now, how often do you give directions to your teammates? I mean, it, it, it's probably 90 minutes, um, you know, um, unless we go into, you know, extra time. Um, uh, it's an emotional drain having to, you know, not that, not that you can't rely on them um, to play their position and do what they're supposed to do. But again, you are a general, you are the most vocal, you know, probably second to the keeper or even with the keeper because of what you see. Um, so I think you're giving direction. I give direction to forwards, particularly when we're when in transition and the opposing team has the ball. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm defending from our front in their defensive third all the way back to wherever you know the ball ends up. You know, so, right. Um, and then watching, you know, are they going to switch? You know, what 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 are they trying to do um, in a counterattack situation? that I then have to make sure my guys are one step ahead, you know, and, and, it, and it's reinforcement too. They may already be there, but then just that reinforcement, you know, hey, you know, fives in front of you, even though you see fives in front of you, we're both mm -hmm. right now I'm communicating with you. We see the same thing, you know? So, um, so it's, 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 it's constant. Now, I've spoken in a few videos back about, you know, beginning of the game, I used to tell folks that, you know, we'd, we'd be warming up, but we'd be looking across the pitch. We'd be sitting there looking at who can kick with their left foot, who can kick with their right foot, who's their skill player. And then we'd all discuss about that and talk about who do we need to mark out the game. Yep. Looking like who's their best player. I don't, I don't think that happens that often nowadays. And, you know, I think kids just go out there, warm up, and just go at it. You know, they're not really – you know, once we stepped on the pitch, once we once we put our boots on, it was game time. We were we were focused. And you unless know? you've got a, maybe a scouting report on, you know, it's a familiar team you're playing against, whether it's you know, high school, college, or 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 or, or men's club or whatever that were pro. Right. And you no, know, but I, I agree. I think you know, um, I think if you have a coach that's in tune, hey, this particular kid, we got to watch him or defend him a certain way, you know, et cetera. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because when Aubrey was doing stats uh, for the girls lacrosse team, she actually scouted in warmups and she would walk to the kids, you know, the girls and say, okay, number two, they're only left-handed, you know, attacker, left-handed midi. Um, but yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, um, I think it depends on how immersed you are into the game as well. Um, right. Out there running around, depending on what age group you are, or are you really in tune with what's going on and, and, and you know, Stepping on the pitch, to your point, being prepared, you know, who am I going against? What are their strengths? You know, that kind of thing. Watching um, their keeper. Is he, uh, um, is he good in the air? Is he bad on the ground? You know, uh -huh. right? You know, like, hey, we need to play a bunch of, 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 of shots on the floor because um, this guy's weak on the ground, you know. So you can pick up a lot of, of, of pieces like that in warm-ups. 
um, or going to a game early, you know, watching a team you may have to play in tournament down the road or something like that. Right, right. So. Yeah, good points. Good points. Yeah. And when did you start using both of your feet, and how did you learn? Um, probably maybe eight, nine years old, nine or ten. Um, I went to Rollins soccer camp um, in the summer, which to your uh, earlier question, what did I do um, around, you know, throughout the year? forgot about that, but I used to go to Rollins soccer camp every summer. Um, it's actually where I met Kirk. It's where um, I met Chris Miller. Um, sure there's some other guys that I met as well, but those two stick out. Um, and that's probably – we were forced okay. to um, – you know, because everybody – you know, works with a dominant foot. I mean, even guys, like, it just, I mean, does Lionel Messi really do much with his right foot? You know, um, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, there's other guys. I mean, you know, Valderrama, did he do anything with his left foot? I mean, right. Right. So, um, but that was probably the place where um, I learned, you know, probably got to be able to use both feet, if not for a defender, be able to clear left footed. Um, maybe the little trap left footed may not be your strength. But, you know, you will be forced to use your off foot uh, at some point. Oh, big time. Big time. Yeah. You know. All right, we're going to discuss now to switch it over to as far as your positioning on the pitch. Um, when, did, when did you decide to come attack the oncoming player or drop back and maintain your position? What, what, uh, what, what, I, I guess the question would be when someone's coming at you, say, from midfield, you're at the midfield line. When do you decide what to do at that point? If, if uh, you know, as you know, when we played, we play up, we play defense in their third. Uh, so I'll attack um, in their third. Um, if I got numbers, I'll definitely, you know, um, and as a sweeper, you know, it's kind of tough. Um, uh, sweeper, central defender, more so on the sweeper side, you know, I typically don't mark. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing my stopper to do that. Um, but if it was three in the back as a central defender and I had numbers, I would definitely attack, particularly if the back is um, if, if I don't have numbers and it's a fast transition, um, I'm probably going to, uh, um, you know, shadow, um, slow them down a bit, maybe come address them and force okay. them laterally. I don't want them coming straight down my throat. Um, and I don't want to make it a track meet, but, you know, as you know, um, you know, I don't mind track meet. Um, and if I do attack, let's say at the 50 at half field and they get by me, I lose my footing or something. I know um, that in a 50 yard sprint or, you know, 35 yards up to the top of the 18, he's ha you have the ball. I don't, you know, I'm going to track you down. I have confidence. Right. right? So um, kind of pick those moments but no one's beating me in a 50 yard sprint at least in my day um you know with the ball absolutely um you know so you, know, you could take your chances sometimes too and to your point early in in uh you know warm-ups watching you know who's got feet who's got mm -hmm. speed, you know maybe you know um you know maybe i don't play that aggressive you know um but you definitely test it early um it also sets a tone um, I think if you attack a defender who's got their back mm -hmm. to you, force them back into their midfield or back to their defense, um, they probably don't want to turn on you, particularly if you, you know, you're stuck in and you, you have to be a tackle or something like that. Um, you know, so you kind of test those waters and see what you can get away with with those guys as well. You don't let, right. Right. You don't, you don't let forwards dictate how you defend. You know, you dictate how they play offense. You know, so that, that's how I like to do it. Very aggressive. Nice. Good information, man. That's great information. All right. So on free kicks, what is your job in the wall on a free kick? If, if I'm in the wall, if it's something that's, you know, um, uh, inside, you know, just outside the box where we need to put a good amount of people in the wall. Um, I like to make sure I'm on the edge of a wall. Um, okay. that so that if, if, you know, they take a shot direct, and it deflects off of one of us in the wall or, you know, isn't, you know, skirts out to the right or the left, I can immediately make my way that way. Obviously, if, you know, they're taking a free kick from our right side of our goal, 
you know, I'll probably want to be on the left side because that's where the most, you know, field is, you know, and then it would be right. true because I got to cover a lot of ground. Um, you know, if it's something that may be a little bit further out and we're building a wall outside the 18, I may elect to be behind the wall and, and wait and see which way, you know, they may pass the ball off. I mean, you know, they're probably mm -hmm. not 30 out. Um, they're probably going to go ahead, even though it could be a direct, maybe they're going to pass the ball off. So I want to make sure that I can see how that transition, you know, flows. Um, because again, I'm typically, you know, not marking anybody. Um, so, but I want to be able to get to the ball as fast as possible, hold it up, you know, call my guys. This is where you need to be. This is how we need to defend. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, push the ball up the field at that point. Um, uh, you know, it varies. You know, there's, I mean, all kinds of situations and set pieces, you know. Right. That's a, that's a good point about, you know, you being on the outside, being the fastest person, because you can go attack that ball if it's on your side. You don't necessarily want to have the slowest guy out there and he's lala gagging to get to the ball, and then there's another shot coming through. You know right. I mean? Right. All right. So um, what is your thought process when there's a corner? Um, as a sweeper, I'm typically free. I, you know, I may elect to mark, but I'm trying to bring everybody back so that I can be that center fielder, if you okay. will. Right? Um, you know, you know, most corners are trying to play a ball somewhere around the PK stripe so that somebody can put a head on it. So, you know, I'm, I'm lining myself up to make a play running forward to that ball, you know, get my head on it and clear it and then get everybody stepped and get out as fast as we possibly can. Because as you know, um, you know, any midfielder or any defender that's playing, you know, in front of half field outside the 18, they're going to dump the ball back into the mixer. So I want to push everybody out to that next play. Right, you know, right. Somebody off sides. And I think that would hold true for a central defender or a sweeper is, you know, once we're on a clear, you know, we're, we're running as fast as we can, you know, up to get the ball or get out in the event they dump it over the top. It's an easy offsides. So um, typically try to play center field again, still try to, you know, be, be a bit of a general, you know. Got you. Man, great answers, man. Great answers. So is there ever a time that you are not moving in your opinion? Halftime when we get a beer. Um, yes. <laughs> I remember, remember Victor Hunt used to have a cigarette at halftime. So um, there you go. Right, right. <laughs> Not, not really, because I think you're, um, you know, you, you're relied upon, um, you know, uh, to kind of be a savior, right? The keeper. I don't want to let my keeper get shot on, you know. Um, mm -hmm. get shut out. I'm, I'm a big part of that. So, no, I don't think you're ever, you know, not moving. Um, you know, you may walk a little bit, um, but, but, you know, you want to be in the, you know, communication um, is a big piece. That's a big helper on the field and being in the right spot. Um, so, you know, even if I'm walking over to a defensive position, you know, guys open, my right back may be up, making the mm -hmm. backing, and I got some guy at midfield, you know, I'll shade over, you know, so that I'm closer just in case something happens. So, you know, now nah, you never, other than halftime, I don't think you're, uh, I don't think you're stationary. Got you. All right. So who is your favorite player? Other than your position and why? Big Tim Howard fan. Um, yeah. You know, um, and I mean, America has been blessed with, or the U.S. has been blessed with a lot of keepers. You know, Casey Keller. Um, I don't know, just I, being a goalkeeper and flying around and, and punching balls out and, and just, you know, always was a, 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 a kind of magnetic position. Um, mm -hmm. But every on always had a keeper that was better than me um but uh i i, I like tim howard um a lot um you know uh um casey keller's you know great keeper friedel i mean i don't want to be a homer but you know we've got some fantastic keepers that have come you know from the u.s um but i don't know just a um guy steps up and makes some fantastic saves you know? so i would say uh just his his you know athletic ability um command you know when he's on the field um everyone listens to him so it's probably um outside of his you know physical capabilities um mm -hmm. the, the 
man just i mean he you know he owns the position which is you know it's cool to see so. right nice and um who did you watch as a youth to learn about your position um i mean i don't think we had like sports channels and stuff back in you know back in my day <laughs> and you, you know you quick pick up ESPN and MTV um, you know so I, I think um, which you know rest in peace um, that one of the most um, impactful books I ever read was about Pele um, so I think and I, I think I read that book when I was like seven or eight years old and you know like you know juggling a grapefruit and just whatever he could get his hands on it you know, I mean, right me it was um I don't know, just a um, interesting story, his upbringing. Um, and then I was, I shared something with Tom um, here over the holidays. It was on um, ESPN about when he was retirement to play for the Cosmos and just, yeah. how, just how electric um, New York was uh, with, with, with Pele in town. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say, you know, from that standpoint, um, he, he wasn't a defender, could have been, but, you know, everybody on the pitch, even if you're a forward, you play some defense. And even as a defender, I play some offense. So we're, we're players, you know, we're, we're athletes. Um, yep. so I'd say, I'd say Pele for sure. Um, and okay. then Victory, the movie Victory was uh, um, just, you know, really cool. You know, I mean, for, I'm sure the audience, you know, I'm not dating myself, your audience probably. <laughs> so, but that was, that was, uh, he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal player and phenomenal figure too, you know, so. Nice. So what are you uh, currently doing now and hope to do in the future? Uh, well, right now, being over on the West Coast, doing a lot of fishing. Um, so, uh, um, you know, that's following. Um, obviously, Aubrey's, you know, got her career cooking with, uh, with lacrosse. Um, you know, they don't need um, any statistician here. Uh, the coach said they probably need something next. Don't want to coach. I want to be able to enjoy um, her playing. Um, you know, I coach the girls lacrosse team at a pop guy. I think. Right, right. right. You know, so Alexis is on doing her thing. Um, but uh, it'd be nice to just kind of kick back and enjoy it. But, yeah, just, you know, supporting what she does. And um, we trained over the holidays, um, tried to get her, in, you know, but she's a defender, uh, you know, oddly enough, um, and just work on body position with her. Um, so you've got to stick in the cross. So we, we try not to defend somebody the same way. We try to be unpredictable. Um, that might be another thing as a defender. Don't be predictable. You know, I said before. Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah, don't dictate how you defend. You dictate how they are, how they attack. And, uh -huh. uh, so we're teaching, you know, and Aubrey's a freshman. So uh, uh, she's a little nervous, you know, going against some of the juniors and seniors. I said, you know, you're all athletes. Everybody's level when you get out right. there. Right. Trying to support her best, best that uh, best that I can with what I know about the sport and you know how how I would play the game. So. Nice man, nice. So, what advice do you have for players your age to affect the game that are still playing football now? Technically, you know, like Central Florida Soccer League or anyone, you know, the older the older generation guys. Um, do your best to stay in shape. Um, you're you're uh. Your body will let you know, you know, um, that you're, um, I would say, uh, um, try to hit the gym about three times, four times a week. But I noticed the biggest thing for me is I stretch. I try to stretch every day. Um, okay. Stretching. Um, All right. I, it, 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 um, uh, you know, hams, quads, IT bands, you know, hips, um, uh, you know, it just, I think that's a big thing. I mean, you know, everybody can say like, you know, eat healthy and, and do this and do that, but we all, you know, indulge, you know, here and there on certain things. Um, but uh, I would say, you know, while we're still playing, you know, I would say, hey, everybody here has to go to work on Monday. Um, right, right. I was, to, I was talking to a customer who plays in an over 50 league in Miami, and he says a lot of people, um, South Americans, and um, some of them are ex, you know, pro players and things, he said they get a lot of fights in the game. And I said, man, we're, we're past, you know, 
we should be at an age where it's just about enjoying it, um, you know, mm -hmm. and the camaraderie instead of right. thinking, you know, right. we're, we're 20 again. We need 20. You know? <laughs> and we need 30 and we need 40. So, um, but I would say, yeah, man, um, uh, just, you know, respect those other players. They have to go to work like you do. Um, and they have families like you do. So, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, you know, you're not, you're not beating Roy Lasseter to the ball. He's 50 plus or 40 plus as well. Exactly. Exactly. And out of shape, you know, so just, you know, it's uh, just, just, I think these people are so mindful of it. Yeah, we've, we've had our share of, of trophy games and things like that. It's, it's nice to just enjoy the game and, and go out. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, so what advice do you have for those, you know, teenagers, college kids going into their, you know, 20s, getting ready to go hit their 30s, that particular bracket who, who really wants to maybe just fine tune their game when it comes to defending? What, what do you suggest? Um, well, you know, on that side of things, um, when it comes to a defending piece, I mean, you got to be, be in better shape than – the person you're going against you know um the last thing you want to do is gas um maybe fast forward um you know so when you're in shape um you know you, you can do things consistently physically um when you're out of shape then your mind and your body don't work together um, right so you know obviously diets are big i mean nutrition's big um you know again these kids play you know, all year round in some cases leading up to high school and college. Um, I think it's okay to take a break. Um, you know, you have to let your body heal. Um, you know, I think that's okay. Um, you have to rest. Um, but uh, in terms of, um, you know, improving your skills, maybe, you know, you reach out to, a um, you know, something we did with Alexis in um, lacrosse to transition from her sophomore to junior year, we hired her a, a coach. Um, right. right. Two, two or three times a week over the summer. They're not doing anything in lacrosse over the summer. And it allowed her to get a ton of time on the ball. You can go out and play a pickup, or you can go out and, and, and play in a competitive league, but you're not going to get the touches that you need. Um, you know, so all, all sports, you know, have the same thing relative to a ball, whether it's basketball, you know, football, I think individual practice with somebody, an individual coach working on those skills. Um, and I don't know necessarily you got to work on what you're bad at. Um, you know, uh, focus at what you're good at, understand what you're bad at. Maybe don't put yourself in situations where, you know, you're, you're, you're relying on the 20% that you don't do real well. Um, because some right. people just, well, I, I, I didn't have foot skill. Um, to compete, maybe even play midfield or forward. You know, I just didn't, just didn't have it. I had long strides and I didn't have the best touch. Um, so I didn't pretend, you know, that I was going to be a midfielder or a forward. I, you know, I, I had a, a certain skill and that carried me from the age of five or six until, you know, I quit playing in my mid forties. I, I didn't try to be a position that I, you know, I wasn't capable, maybe not capable, but that I wasn't okay. maybe built right. for, it. you know, I mean, you know, right. Some, some people run track, not everybody can run track. They're just not built for it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I would, you know, that, that would be something that, you know, it's okay. If, if, if your skill set's not a forward skill set, you know, you gotcha. know? so, you know, for whatever it's worth. So like I said, just, just stay active is, is what the bottom line I'm hearing is just be active in the off season. To progress. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. And what changes would you like to see for the current game? I mean, after watching the World Cup, I don't really know um, about the replay, when to institute it and when not to institute it. That's a tough one. Um, I think I'd like to see less diving. Um, or if someone is diving to get a foul inside the peak. Right. Cup, um, they're awarded, a, you know, a yellow, you know, if it's, if it's, I mean, there has to be some type of, um, uh, punishment, you know, for, um, 
an, I think a, a midfield or a forward who is is you know drawing contacts one thing, but but dragging a foot to get a you know get a foul that that isn't a foul you know and then mm-hmm. you I mean you know right different European ball South American ball you know I roll ten times I hold my ankle and then as soon as I get the call it's I understand it's part of it but to me it's 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 sissy right. stuff if you're not bleeding then potentially mm-hmm. you know, there's really no foul. Um, you know, so I think the referees could do a better job of, of, of getting control of that early and, um, you know, not letting guys, unless it's a, a, a real strong foul that's committed, um, that's, that's uh, you know, penalty worthy or card worthy. Um, I, I think they need to be the, the ticky tack crap um, a little bit better. That's but you know coming from a defender because I like to I like to lay people out. <laughs> I mean, right. You know, right. If I touch you and you go down, I, I, I you know. Correct. Give, yes. Give me an opportunity to get stuck in, please. You know, so. Yeah, I like to, I like to see the uh, I like to see the players stop crowding around the ref. Yeah. You know, for for especially if it's a, a penalty, that's the worst to me. It's like the whole team just makes a circle around the ref. Yeah. Trying to deter him from not making, you know, keeping that call or or just, you know, holding their hand up saying, you know, every every fall is a yellow card, you know. So, I yeah, I, I do hope that they, they clean up some aspects of what you're saying and what I'm saying as well. Well, you're getting, getting, you're getting into, you know, situations you know, in, in it's a different sport, but like in the last three nights in the NBA, you know, to your point, they crowd the Right, with the fights, right. Go so you know ref calls a foul. This guy punches somebody else. And, yeah, and you, and you see it, you know, on TV fights that break out. But I agree. If I were a referee and you've got you know eight or nine guys yelling at you, it's not they they're they're losing respect for the not necessarily the officials, but the game. When but the when game right type of happens, like guy made a call, may not be the best call. You respect it, you live with it, move on. Right, you know. No. And you're right, because they're, they're affecting the game because you might end up getting a red card now and you just affected how your team is playing. Correct. Correct. It's just because you couldn't even control what, what, what you can control. You know what I mean? You're trying to control what's out of your hands. So good good point, man. Good point. On your, on your part as well. All right. So any, any shout outs? Well, obviously, um, uh, for uh, having me on and uh, you're better at for uh, setting things up um, before we uh, before we got on, <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, um, and uh, um, you know, um, and I guess anybody that you know um, is trying to um, affect the game by teaching their kid, um, girl or boy, you know, right sportsmanship, you know, learning that kind of stuff at a young age. Um, uh, I think in in today's environment. Um, and you've seen it. I've coached it. Um, the you know, um, uh, you know, teach your kids respect for the game, respect for other kids. Um, nobody's above it, um, you know. And um, uh, but yeah, shout out to parents that are teaching their kids. You know, the lo- losing's okay. You know, um, yeah. you know right. That's what, that's what has to happen to make you better. And then you know, helping them become a, a, a good team, a good uh, sportsman or sportswoman, I guess. Niceness. Well, man, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you for coming out and being a, being a friend of the show. Um, got a nice little special video that we made up here for you. Okay. Um, that the uh, production manager guru, being my wife, did a nice little act of play. So just you know, stay with us here for a moment, and then okay. we'll, we'll come back on to sign off. Ah, James. <laughs> Sign off for you, brother. Yeah, bro. Do drop there. So. All right.
Good so listen, you. thanks again for, for, for coming on, giving us a light in us. You know, hope, I know the uh, the audience has really, really uh, taken home some facts That's cool. and uh, learned a lot more about the position that, that you really took in as your own. Okay. And uh, with that, this is GB signing off with Mr. Mike Hyder, nicknamed Hydro, because he was the fastest man on the field, man. He was faster than me. Uh, so, yeah, man, appreciate your time. We'll sign off. I'm uh, wearing my Bob Marley Ajax jersey for the Bob Marley's birthday today. So nice sign kid. off. He's always made the world a better place, and we're hoping to do the same thing for, for future generations, giving back our knowledge to the to the sport that we so much love. So GB signing off up for 90 plus. Y'all have a great rest of your evening.